this week we have a new film from Guy Ritchie. It is called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Gus March Phillips, I have a mission I want you to lead. Thank you, Sergeant. What's the plan? To neutralize the German U-boats in the North Atlantic. And it is essentially like a throwback to those kind of like man on mission World War II movies yeah. from the 60s and 70s. <clears throat> Guns of Navarone, The Dirty Dozen. I'm sure a lot of people will be thinking of Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, which is another kind of throwback to that kind of yeah, movie. And, and Guy Ritchie openly says that one of the filmmakers that's had a large influence on his career is Quentin Tarantino. I think this is him trying to make his version of Inglorious Bastards, and it's sort of Inglorious Bastards, but not nearly as good, which is. But it's still really good. It's 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 a fun time. I what are your opinions on Guy Ritchie? Because I'm someone like I I almost <clears> don't know how to talk about him because it's just like you know how you sometimes have those allergies to food where you're just sort of like I, it's just not my thing. And his movies for the most part are kind of just not my thing. But this is one of the rare times I've kind of walked out and thought like this is he works as a director with this kind of material, this kind of unpretentious down the middle kind of like Saturday afternoon on TNT, like, dad movie, <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> word. And, and just, like, him is kind of like a middle-brow, no-fuss action movie director, I think works very well. But what, what are kind of your thoughts on Richie? So, I, I mean, look, Lock, Stock, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is a, is a really excellent film. That's his first movie, and that's the one that really introduced the world to him. Uh, he, of course, is also known for the Sherlock Holmes films, and I think... The first Sherlock Holmes film is really good and enjoyable. It is pulpy, like you say. That's, that's the Downey Jr. one, right? Yes, Robert yeah. Downey Jr. version, yeah. And, and he made the second one, um, Sherlock Holmes 2, Game of Shadows, I believe it was called. Uh, he made uh, Disney's Aladdin, which I really didn't care for. And then he's made a lot of other films that are like, eh. They're just, uh, there's not a ton to them in terms of making you think. Yeah. Uh, I, I th I agree with you. I think this film is one of his stronger movies. I don't think it's quite as good as as the original Sherlock Holmes, which I again I really really enjoyed. Um, it's certainly not as good as maybe his first couple very very early films, but again that most people probably haven't seen or or haven't thought about in, in quite a long time. But this is Guy Ritchie in as you say in an element where he can succeed. He doesn't let in some of his films. I think he lets his directorial flourishes overwhelm the movie a little bit. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have like as many of the slow motion kind of things yeah. and, and, and as much of the splattering of blood and the such. It, it is feels violent. Like for a but, while he was kind of, I mean, the Tarantino comparison, he feels like he was trying to kind of live up to this perception as like, I'm the British Tarantino. Yeah, and he's not there. And he's not, he's not quite on the same level and then he kind of it feels like was in the wilderness of he like he made that awful King Arthur movie right oh, he was, was in terrible. the wilderness of like I need a franchise and just being like studios picking him to like can you do a King Arthur movie can you do an Aladdin movie a Sherlock Holmes movie and really to me I think the pleasure of this movie the one the film in his filmography that it reminds me of is uh, did you ever see when he did like A Man from Uncle adaptation yeah with also Henry Cavill, had Ken, oh, Henry Cavill yeah. in it as well and I think by the way his next film is with Henry Cavill like he, he per, finds actors he like Carrie Elwes he likes yeah. there's certain actors that he there are in a lot of and, his films. and Henry Cavill I think perfect for him I, I was talking with some people as we were walking out last night about how like man Henry Cavill was really wasted all those years and all those like bad Superman <laughs> movies of it he's I think Guy Ritchie understands fun. He yeah, really understands fun. how to like make him charming and it be fun to watch on screen and there's something kind of dashing and swashbuckling about him. He's not like this rugged, like super brooding guy that Hollywood was trying to make him for so many years. And I don't know, there's just something about the the effortlessness of this movie as well as the Man from Uncle movie. And like I said, I, I like the idea of Guy Ritchie as someone that, you know, the if we think about kind of like are great kind of unpretentious genre movie action filmmakers of like, he's not like, I'm not trying to make kind of this super, you know, meta text that's also talking about movie history like Quentin Tarantino or something like that. He's just like, I just want to do a cool get in, get out action movie. And I, I had a pretty good time with this as just sort of like yeah. a fun night out at the movies. I, I, I enjoyed this film also. And, and I think my biggest takeaway from it is as I sort of thought about, okay, who wouldn't like this movie or who wouldn't have a good time in it? I'm, I'm struggling to come up with an answer because I think it is a very universal kind of film. Uh, much like Inglorious Bastards, there are a whole lot of Nazis that get killed. And for the most part, the good guys never make a wrong turn, which is, which is a lot of fun. Um, I, I, it's not, 
uh, look, this is not a super clever movie. It does not have characters who, other than there's a there's a, 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 a like a really buff Danish character. Right. I blanked on the actor's name now. He's he's on the the Reacher show. In, yes, he's the Amazon, star of Reacher yes. right now. I can't believe I've, I've forgotten his name. Um, that character pops off the screen a little bit, right? Partially due to his violence and the way he kills Nazis. Like he mostly uses a bow and arrow, and at one point he uses an axe, and it's just like the audience you cheer for him. Right. Because it's so much fun. But, but for the most part, this is not a movie that's going to make you think a lot. This is not a movie that has a lot of great dialogue in it. Like, again, making the Inglorious Bastard comparison because you cannot help but do it in this film. There were a number of times where the characters would say something to each other and I would go, Quentin Tarantino would have taken that page, torn it up, and used it as toilet paper. And yet there is something kind of like musical about the dialogue in this movie. And like it is, it's, it's I mean, very... I it's a little bit. It's very B-movie. Like, it, like every line is meant to be kind of like a cool throwaway, like, you know, catchphrase basically. And people are talking in like fun riddles and like you have Henry Cavill just yeah. being like, cheerio. Like, I'm sure all the British people are going to hate me for doing that. <laughs> but you know, it's, it, it gets back to that point I kind of mentioned of like, there's there's an unpretentiousness about this movie. It's it's just trying to be nothing but kind of like a pretty good time and like a pretty solid action movie. And I, I like that every now and then. I, I mean, look, I I think this is probably a mostly forgettable film. Sure. Um, but that doesn't mean it's a, a bad film. And like you say, I, I kind of agree with you. My bottom line on it would be, is this a movie I'm going to want to revisit in three, five, ten years? Mm -hmm. No. Is this a movie that I had a good time watching? Yes, absolutely. And I think... Again, most of our audience out there, if they go and see this movie, they'll go, "Yeah, that was that was fun. That was, you know, yeah. the, uh, you you could it, do a lot worse than, than grabbing yeah. a beer and a pizza and then just enjoying some it's some a good muscular popcorn guy. flip, right? You know, yeah, pop that popcorn. It, it's not more than two hours. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely it's a worthwhile time at the movies. And frankly, we don't get a ton of those, so no, no I'm all for it. I'm, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Well, Jason, I want to encourage everyone again to check out our review of Challengers. That's also available to stream on 11 Alive Plus. We will also be discussing the upcoming summer movies in in the next month. We are returning. It's about to, to get really busy, man. <laughs> uh, we're about to return to the Planet of the Apes. Um, we're going to be returning to another post-apocalyptic wasteland of Mad Max's George Miller and uh, Ryan Gosling, who's just like slaying it on SNL. Now, then we got him in the Fall Guy coming up, so it's it's going to be a fun month or so. I'm of looking movies. forward to it. Yeah, it's the start of summer. This is the this is when you get the movies. Maybe not the best movies, but you get the movies that are the best for audiences. Sure. Well, until that time, we will see you at the movies.